Welcome to Framed Architecture. This is the second episode of the series titled The History of Architecture. Today we are going to explore ancient Egypt, so let's get into it. Researchers consider ancient Egypt to be made up of three main kingdoms. The Old Kingdom, which started about 2700 BCE to 2200 BCE, then Middle Kingdom, which started around 2050 to 1800 BCE, and the New Kingdom, which lasted from 1550 to 1100 BCE. In this video, we are going to explore different architectural monuments from each kingdom, so stay tuned, but first, we're going to learn more about the characteristics before analyzing each monument. Some of the characteristics of ancient Egyptian architecture include that the two principal building materials used were unbaked mud brick and stone. From the Old Kingdom onwards, stone was used, generally used for tombs, the eternal dwellings of the dead, and for temples, the eternal houses of the gods. The stone used was mainly limestone and sometimes sandstone and granite in considerable quantities. Stone was generally reserved for tombs and temples, while brick was used for royal palaces, fortresses, the walls of temple precincts and towns. As you can see, mud, uh, mud brick and stone are very durable materials, so you can notice that religious architecture was meant to last and therefore it needed to be dur durable so that religion can be passed on to future generation generations and it can be uh, protected by this architecture that's always going to be surrounding the people living in Egypt. In addition, we have thick sloping walls with few openings and this was uh, a way or a characteristic of walls in order to help in the building of uh, mud walls which is uh, a special method used uh, and is needed for their construction. There are also incised and flatly modeled surface adornments of the stone buildings inspired from mud wall ornamentation and flat roofs constructed of huge stone blocks supported by the external walls and the closely spaced columns in order to lift the heavy weight of stone. Ancient Egyptian temples were aligned with astronomically significant events, such as solstices, which is when the sun reaches its most northerly or southerly excursion relative to its celestial equator, and equinoxes, when the equator plane of Earth passes the equator of the sun. Such examples of important astronomical events required precise measurements at the moment of these particular events so that sometimes they were very important that they were done by the pharaohs themselves. Exter also, exterior and interior walls, as well as the columns and piers, were covered with hieroglyphic and pictorial frescoes and carvings painted in brilliant colors. These brilliant colors were made from crushing the petals and the leaves of exotic plants grown near the Nile River. There, the hieroglyphs were inscribed for decorative purposes as well as to record historic events or sometimes spells. One of the most iconic elements in ancient Egyptian architecture are columns that are indicative of bundles of plants such as lotus buds and papyrus flowers which are found in palaces, pyramids, tombs and temples. They are, they are used to advertise their vegetable origin through the use of the painted flowers and petals on top and the stems on the shafts of the columns that grow out and further apart as the column rises. This small detail is very effective in heightening the space inside the enclosures and it gives that person a sense of more comfort, comfort while walking inside these palaces or tombs or structures. Egyptian temples were approached by huge avenues of sphinxes which possessed in their massive pylons, great courts, hypostyle halls, inner sanctuaries and sometimes dim secret rooms. 
Templates typically grew by accretion or replacement according to the increasing requirements of a powerful priesthood or to satisfy the ambition of successive kings. Some temples and pyramids, as mentioned before, were carefully situated based on astronomical events. It's important to say that the development of these temples or tombs or structures were a demonstration of the civilization's evolution of its current state, economic, political, and they were used to record wars or even some situations of colonizing or anything that might be going on inside the country, which is a great way to tell stories physically tell stories or narrate stories through architecture. As you see now, we're going to start discussing some of the iconic structural monuments of the Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. Starting with the Mustabe, which is an Arabic word for bench, it's a rectangular superstructure of ancient Egyptian tombs, built of mud brick or later stone with sloping walls and a flat roof. It has a deep shaft descending to the underground burial chamber. In architectural terminology, a superstructure is not one made by Superman, forgive me for this pun, it's a structure that is built above the ground, and a substructure is one that's built below the ground. The Mustabe at Beit Khalaf is a massive stairway tomb made of crude brick of the Third Dynasty. It has uh, features, the ramp and stairs that are guarded by portcullises, which lead to a rock-cut stone-lined tomb chamber that is encircled by a knot of magazines for the funerary offerings. However, above the ground, it looks like a plain and virtually solid structure. Perhaps this structure is used or is not as appealing because it's used to protect the chamber from the grave chamber from being broken into or stolen. Then we have the beginnings of the pyramids. And this was one of the most notable pyramids as you can see in the photo in front of you. It's the pyramid of Djoser and also called the Step Pyramid. It's an archaeological site in the Saqqara Necropolis, Egypt, northwest to the city of Memphis. It's a six-year four-sided structure and is the earliest colossal stone building in Egypt. It was built in the 27th century BC during the third dynasty of the burial uh, of Pharaoh Djoser. And it's considered one of the first large-scale monuments in stone created by the architect Imhotep. Imhotep was an Egyptian chancellor to the Pharaoh Djoser. And he was, probable, uh, he was the probable architect of the Djoser Step Pyramid and the high priest of the sun god Ra at Heliopolis. Um, very little is known of Imhotep as a historical figure, figure, but in the 3000 years following his death, he was gradually glorified and then defied. Um, the Step Pyramid began as a complete mustaba but had an unusual square plan. As time moved on, it was extended by twice its size, then this space was used to create the four-stepped pyramid, so layers were added on top of it. And as you can see, it was an accretion, uh, accretion development of the pyramid, so it was not intentional, it was, intentional, it was an add-on. Then we have the Red Pyramid. And it's the largest of the three major pyramids located at Tahshur Necropolis in Cairo, Egypt. Named for the rusty reddish hue of its red, stone, red, red limestone, it is also the third largest Egyptian pyramid uh, after those of Khufu and uh, Khafra at Gizeh, or Giza. It is also believed to be Egypt's uh, first successful attempt at uh, constructing a true smooth-sided pyramid. The pyramid was cased with white Tura limestone, but only a few of these uh, stones now remain at the pyramid space at the corner, uh, as during the Middle Ages, uh, much of the white Tura limestone was taken for buildings in Cairo, revealing the red limestone underneath. The Pyramid of Amenhamid I is one of the Middle Kingdom architecture 
and it's an Egyptian burial structure built at Lisht by the founder of the 12th dynasty of Egypt, Amenhemet I. The pyramid is similar to the approximate sizes and forms of pyramids in the Old Kingdom, but it's different because each component structure in the pyramid complex has its own unique name. These structures together were known as the places of the appearance of Amenhemet. The causeway ran in a straight line on the axis of the pyramid and temple, but interestingly was built without a roof. It wa its walls were nevertheless apparently decorated with scenes depicting the uh, processions of foreigners, estates, nobles and gods. However, regrettably, this uh, generation of pyramids utilized mud brick and in, the, in their construction which is always a problem for, from the standpoint of preservation and sustainability as mud brick is not as um, durable as stone. The entrance of the descending passage way in the north face of the pyramid about ground level uh, it, and it was covered by the north chapel and upon the king's burial a red granite false door at the rear of the chapel sealed the entrance. The entrance corridor which was uh, in line with the pink granite and sealed with the blocks of the same material gradually descended to a square chamber, chamber that lay on the pyramid's vertical axis. Here, a vertical shaft in the floor dropped to the burial chamber that today is troubled by local groundwater. All efforts to pump the groundwater, unfortunately, have uh, are so are so far failing, which is uh, indi which indicates that the changes in the environment really cause a threat to the. Uh, Arch historical architectural sites and they do not always um, ha stay strong against the test of time. Another structure of the Middle Kingdom is the Temple of Menhotep, Mentohotep the Intebes. Amenhotep II is the 11th dynasty king who reunited Egypt at the beginning of the Middle Kingdom and built a very unusual funerary complex. His mortuary temple was built on several levels in the Great Bay at Deir al Bahar or Deir al Bahri. This temple is a transition between the Old Kingdom Temple of the Pyramid and the New Kingdom House of Millions of Years. For the first time, the tomb of the king is united with its mortuary temple. The new kingdom will later separate the tomb and the valley of the kings from the house of millions of years. The complex consisted of a valley temple, the ruins of which lie under the fields at the edge of the Nile River and some say under the ruins of Ramses IV's valley temple. It has a causeway, a step terraced mortuary temple that is partially cut into the rock face uh, cliff and a subterranean ch burial chamber. The complex is generally oriented east-west, but bent slightly to the north. While not much is known of the valley temple, the causeway, unlike most of its uh, counterparts in the Old Kingdom, was open and had Assyrian statu statues of the king located along its sides at ir irregular intervals. It terminated at the main temple complex in a large courtyard surrounded by a limestone wall. At the back of the courtyard, the western end, stood the massive terraced mortuary temple. The facade of the lower pillared hall consisted of a portico built of limestone blocks. This portico had uh, two rows of pillars and it was divided in half by a ramp leading to the second uh, terrace. Originally, the portico, wall were, uh, portico walls were decorated with scenes of battle. On the axis of the pillared courtyard's pavement in this western addition in a, is a vaulted descending corridor which, with, uh, ha which has the first clad in limestone that abruptly ends with its remaining uh, length consisting of rough bedrock walls. It leads down to what is referred to as the king's burial chambers and uh, the hieroglyphic paintings on the walls um, feature stories of the wars of Mentuhotep uh, of which he re reunited Egypt. Then another structure of the New Kingdom is the Luxor Temple. It's a very large ancient Egyptian temple complex located at the east bank of the River Nile. The building of this monumental complex started during the reign or ruling of Amenhotep III in the 14th century BC. Afterwards, a different pharaohs would add some elements to it like columns, statues, uh, and freezes, but it, this Egyptian temple complex is considered unique because only two pharaohs left their marks on the architectural structure of this temple. As a major expansion uh, effort took place under Ramses II's reign, 
uh, some 100 years after the first stone, uh, stones were put in place after uh, being first built. So these are the only changes to the architecture and structure. The temple proper begins with the 24 meter high first pylon uh, built by Ramses II. The pylon was decorated with scenes of Ramses' military triumphs. Uh, through the pylon gateway leads into a peristyle courtyard, which is a courtyard elevated above the ground a little bit, and it's also built by Ramses II. And they were all these all all of these elements were built at an oblique angle to hold the three uh, shrines together. The Malkata Palace is another palace in the New Kingdom architecture, which is um, a word. Malkata is an Arabic word meaning that it's like something that catches ruins and it's built by uh, the Amenhotep III during the 18th dynasty um the how it's also called the called the house of rejoicing and the palace of the dazzling Aten. it's located on the west bank of the nile at tebas in upper egypt in the desert to the south of medina tabu researchers have found that the walls were covered with bright delicate paintings some of which are still faintly visible Animals, flowers, and the reed beds along the Nile River were all depicted on the walls of the pharaoh's grand estate. Malkata was a home on the scale of a city except built for a single ruler. There was little use of stone as it was only used for column bases, bath floors, and dorsals for their durability. The walls were made of mud brick and covered with hieroglyphs and drawings as mentioned before and wood was used for columns and roofing beams as it's slight and can hold weight and tension. You can see now that this is um, this structure shows the evolution and of the ancient Egyptian civilization and the great wealth it has reached to an extent where a pharaoh can build a house that's uh, that's on a scale of a city which is something that's surreal and it shows the great strength and power that uh, and the wealth that the civilization had but it also shows some inequality and dictatorship in the ruling system which is something that's unfortunate indeed but without this step in uh, in civilization and in history we would not have understood the importance of uh, democratic rulings and equality which is something that people have struggled with over history all along and we are still having some challenges to this day but um it's also proving that now we have modern architecture which is uh, more humbled and without this evolution we cannot tell the story of how people have developed their mindsets and their beliefs through um physical storytelling um, um uh, characteristics of the architectural structures that are that lasted through history and are joining our modern architectural builds ancient egyptian architecture is a remarkable era of architecture as it trans transitioned from survival to reaching the deeper meaning of life religion belief and pre preparing yourself for the afterlife has become a priority during this era and at this point architecture served not only as a physical house but as a spiritual home Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions for me, I would like to hear them down in the comments. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed.